Hello everyone. So after you learn the concept about moment of a force, so see to it that you really learn that. So we're now going to to solve sample problems about moment of a force. So let us start solving. So now let's start solving uh, sample problems. So the first uh, sample problem here, assuming clockwise moments as positive, compute the moment of force F, uh, which is equal to 450 Newton, and a force P equal to 361 Newton about points A, B, and C. So we have here force F. So this is force F. And uh, we have here force P. So your force F is 450 Newton. And your force P is um, 361 Newton. So we are asked here to solve the moments of these forces. Okay, about point A. So here is the point A. Point B. So this is your point B. And your point C. So this is your point C. So um, each square or the side of each square um, in this problem is actually equal to 1 meter. So let's try to, to solve this problem. So again, the given for this problem is a uh, force F, which is 450 Newton, and your force P is 361 Newton. Okay, so we are asked here to, to solve for the moments of these forces about point A, about point B, and about point C. So we, we actually have a lot of solutions for this. Okay, so for our solution one, okay, so since we are going to solve for uh, the moment of this force about point A, so we will need a perpendicular distance, right? So the perpendicular distance of uh, this force, okay, to point A, it will be this distance, right? It will be somewhere uh, uh, like he here, right? So um, that perpendicular distance, we actually don't know um, how are we going to, to solve that here, right? So instead of, of using that, okay, in solving for, for the moment of this force F, we can actually also use, okay, the components of this force, okay, the components of this force, uh, which are the uh, vertical component and the horizontal component, we can use uh, them, no, in solving the, uh, moment of this force, we just have to, to take the moment or solve the moment of those component forces about point A, right? So also, uh, for force P, as you can see here, so the slope of force P or inclination will be uh, this way, right? So um, as you can see here, if you're going to extend the line of action of this force P, okay, uh, along here, okay, so it will actually cross, okay, or pass through point A, right because it has the same uh, inclination here right so um what what's going to happen here is that you know already that your force p okay will have a zero moment at point a because it passes through okay your the line of action of your force p passes through okay your center of moment will be uh, which is point a so meaning to say you already know that uh, this will give you a zero moment okay this force p but um, we're going to, to solve still, okay, for um, the moment of this force P by using the, the components of this force. So we're going to, to solve for the moment of uh, its component forces. So uh, we will see here, okay, that uh, it should give you uh, a zero moment for, for that force, for the summation of the uh, component forces of this force. Okay, so we will see that in our solution. So... Uh, this will be uh, our solution, no? So, uh, as I've mentioned, that we're going to solve the, the moment of force F, okay, by using uh, the components, its components, its uh, vertical component Fy, and its horizontal component Fx. So, as you can see here, uh, your vertical component Fy will have a perpendicular distance here, and also your horizontal uh, component here will have also a perpendicular distance uh, from your point A, right? So uh, from here, okay, also here uh, in your uh, force P, okay, so this uh, vertical component will also have uh, a perpendicular distance from point A, right? And also your horizontal component, it will have, um, if we extend this line of action, it will have um, uh, a perpendicular distance here, right? So we're going to solve that 
uh, using this component. So solving for the moment at A, so that's uh, the first item that we're going to solve. Uh, that will be moment at A is equal to the summation of all the moments, okay, of all the forces, okay, that has moment at point A. Okay, so uh, we will write here our assumption, and our assumption here is that uh, for positive uh, positive uh, rotation, it will be clockwise. Okay, so that's our sign convention, right? Uh, clockwise rotations will be positive, and counterclockwise rotations will be negative. So uh, the moment at A will be equal to uh, the first uh, component or force that has for uh, that has moment about point A is uh, F Y. So its moment, okay, will just be F Y. So the, the vertical component of this force F, so how are we going to, to solve that? So we can use slope triangle here since we know that um, its rise will be 1, 2, 3, and your run will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's the, the slope of your uh, force F, right? Uh, run is 1, 2, 3, 4, and your run will be 1, 2, 3. Okay, so... From, from that, okay, from that rise and run, okay, so let's say uh, this will be the slope triangle, your rise will be 3 and your run will be 4. So the third side of the slope, of your slope triangle will be square root of 4 square plus 3 squared, right? So that will be 5. So that will be the hypotenuse of your um, slope triangle. So from that, we can solve the uh, vertical component of force F, so that will be 450. Your force F is 450 times the um, side that is parallel to the component that you are solving, which is Fy. So that will be 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 5. So that will be 450 times 350, uh, 450 times 3 over 5. Okay, so that will be your Fy, the magnitude of your Fy times. Um, so since we are solving for the moment, so it will be multiplied to its perpendicular distance d about the point that uh, we are solving the moment. Okay, so its perpendicular distance from point uh, A, okay, so this will be the perpendicular distance, right? So this perpendicular distance is equivalent to 1 meter, so that will be equal to 1. Okay, so that will be 450 times 3 over 5 times 1. So uh, the rotation, okay, or the direction of the rotation of your Fy about point A will be uh, this rotation. So this is actually counterclockwise. That's why it is negative here. Okay, so that will be the moment of your Fy. Now, proceeding to uh, the next uh, force, which is the um, horizontal component of your force F, so that will be Fx. So solving first for Fx, okay, so that will be 450 times the uh, side that is parallel, okay, to uh, the, the side in your uh, force triangle, in your slope triangle that is per that is parallel okay to uh, the component that you are solving which is fx so that will be uh, 4 that side is 4 so that will be 450 times 4 over the hypotenuse which is 5 okay so uh, the moment arm for uh, your fx okay so extending this uh, line of action so its uh, perpendicular distance will be this Okay, so this will be your moment arm. So this perpendicular distance is 1, 2, 3. So that will be 3 meters. No, So that will be multiplied by 3. Okay, here, um, the rotation of this uh, force Fx, okay, or component force Fx, okay, uh, about point A, its rotation will be counterclockwise. So since it will rotate this way, so that will be counterclockwise. That's why it's negative here. So proceeding now to, to the next uh, component, which are the components of your force P. So let's start with uh, your force PY, right? Okay, so here uh, we also need the, the slope uh, triangle here. Okay, since we have no uh, given angle here for, for this force P, right? For the inclination of this force. So um, the slope of this uh, force P, okay, will be... Uh, your rise will be 1, 2, 3, right? And your run will be 1, 2. So that will be the, the, the size of your slope triangle. So your rise will be 3 and your run will be 2, okay? So um, the, the, the third side or the hypotenuse of that slope triangle will just be square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to square root of 13, okay? So from that, okay, we can now solve for... 
um, our first uh, for our first component, which is py. So your py, okay, that is the vertical component of your force p. Okay, so your py will be um, p. Your p is 361 times the the side from the slope triangle that is parallel to that. Uh, component which is 3 so that will be 3 over square root of 13 which is the hypotenuse right so that will be the uh, vertical component of force p times its moment arm so its moment arm so its rotation about point a will be this way right so its rotation will be uh, this way and its perpendicular distance will be uh, this distance so this distance Okay, again, okay, so uh, you can also get the, the perpendicular distance here by extending this line of action. So this will be the perpendicular distance. So this is also that, right? So this perpendicular distance is actually 2. So this is 1, 2. So that is 2 meter. So that will be the, the perpendicular distance. Now, again, the uh, direction of the rotation of this PY, okay, about point A, it will be clockwise, right? So since this will be clockwise, so this will be positive here. That's why it's positive here. Now, for the last force, which is the horizontal component of your force P, so the, uh, that is Px. So your Px will be uh, 361 times uh, the, the side that is parallel in the slope triangle for Px is uh, 2. So that will be 361 times 2 over the hypotenuse, which is square root of 13 times the moment arm. So don't forget the moment arm class. Again, the moment arm is the perpendicular distance ha, of your of the line of action of your force to the point that you are getting the moment. Okay, so here for Px, okay, so it's moment arm or the perpendicular distance. So extending this line of action. So this will be the perpendicular distance. So this perpendicular distance will be 1, 2, 3. So that is 3. No, So its rotation, okay, if about point A will be counterclockwise, right? So since it is counterclockwise, uh, it will be negative here, right? So now we, we already have here um, the um, summation no, of, your, of the moment of your forces uh, involved okay, in your system. So um, let us first check, okay? So as I've mentioned earlier, that the moment of your force P okay, about point A should be zero. So this summation, okay, for the... A moment of the components of force p it should be zero so let us first check okay so this will be 361 so let's input it uh, in our calculator so this will be 361 times 3 over square root of 13 uh, times 2 minus 361 times 2 over square root of 13 times uh, 3 so it should give you zero so as you can see in your calculator it uh, give you a zero answer because the moment of this force ping uh, since it passes through point a it, it will really be zero so now solving for the moment at a we know that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, values will be zero so here for uh, the remaining value we have to solve that so inputting that in our calculator that will be negative 450 times 3 over 5 times 1 uh, minus 450 times 4 over 5 times 3. So it will give you negative 1,350. So that negative sign indicates that um, your moment okay, is actually the opposite of the, the, the assumed positive direction. So the, our assumed positive direction is clockwise. So if the answer here is negative, meaning to say our assumption is wrong. Okay, and it should be negative, right? or it should be uh, the opposite direction, which is clock, counterclockwise. So your moment at A is actually 1,350 newton meter counterclockwise. Okay, so uh, the newton meter here will be the unit of your moment. Ha? So again, the, the, the formula of your moment is force times D. So the unit of your force is newton. And the unit of your distance, D, is meter. That's why it's Newton meter here. Okay, so you have to indicate the, the, the unit. Okay, so if you uh, don't uh, indicate or include your unit here, or, or if you uh, put here a wrong unit, okay, it will be wrong. Your answer will, will, will be wrong. So if you put here a Newton unit, okay, that your moment is Newton, no, that is wrong. 
no it should be newton meter for 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 this given okay so this will be the the moment at a so it is 1350 newton meter counter clockwise now uh, we can actually uh, solve this uh, using another solution okay so as i've mentioned earlier we can use a lot of solution for uh, for this problem okay so uh, the second solution will be um, if we're going to apply the principle of transmissibility, okay, so uh, the, the principle, by the way, that we apply here in solving for solution one is uh, uh, Barignon's theorem, right? So we solve the, the moment of the forces okay, using the moment okay, of its component forces. So that is Barignon's theorem. So here in solution two, okay, so we, we will still use Barignon's theorem, but uh, we will also use a uh, principle of transmissibility. So in principle of transmissibility, we can actually transfer the force, okay, as long as it's in the same line of action. So also, we can transfer uh, the, the, the components of the force, right? So here for, for our solution two, okay, so let's say uh, we have here this force, right? And supposedly its component forces should be here. Right, so in in this case, we um, we transfer the component forces, okay, the component forces of force F here. So actually, it will be easier, right, if we uh, transfer the the components of this force uh, in this uh, position, okay. So uh, if we solve for the moment of F X, okay, so there will be no perpendicular distance. So meaning to say, it will just be zero. So it will be easier because uh, your fx will be cancelled. The moment of your fx will be cancelled since it will pass through point A. That is the, the that is one of the conditions to, to have a zero moment, right? So this force fx will just have a zero moment about point A since it will pass through point A, right? So um, it will be um, easier, right? Because uh, there's already a value na, na cancel. Okay, so also... Um, we can also transfer the component forces of force P. Instead of uh, putting your component force here, we can actually also put your component forces here. So uh, supposedly, this uh, the moment that we're going to get about point A, it should be the same. Okay, so let's check it. It, it will yield the same answer. So uh, solving for the moment of this component forces. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so uh, it will be moment at A. So again, the, our center of moment will still be uh, point A. It will be equal to the summation of all uh, the forces that have moment about point A. And our positive assumption here will be uh, clockwise, right? So uh, let's start uh, solving for its uh, summation. Okay, so it will be uh, moment at A equal to... Uh, the first force here that we're going to to uh, solve uh, the moment, okay, so that will be Fy. So that is the vertical component, excuse me, again of your force F. So the vertical component again is 450 times 3 over 5. So the moment arm or the perpendicular distance of uh, your Fy here from your uh, center of moment, so that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, so that will be five meter. That's why uh, it is five here. And your rotation will be uh, counterclockwise, right? So it will rotate this way. So this is counterclockwise. So that will be negative here in your summation. So again, your your f x will just be zero. So it we will not uh, include that anymore here in our summation. Okay. So uh, also for your uh, p x and your p y, your p y again that is the vertical component of your force p, and that is three six one times three over square root of thirteen. So its moment arm will be uh, counting the, the the squares. So that will be one two three four. So its perpendicular distance. So again, uh, we can also uh, uh, see the perpendicular if we. Uh, extend this line of action. So the perpendicular distance is here. So that will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's why it is times 4 here, right? So uh, the rotation, okay, of your PY about point A will be this way. So this is uh, counter clock, no, clockwise. This is clockwise. So since this is clockwise, it is positive here in our summation. In our summation. Now, for your PX, okay, so it will also have moment at point A. So 
Um, again, your Px will be 361 times 2 over square root of 13. And it's moment arm or perpendicular distance. So uh, extending this line of action, so this will be the perpendicular distance. So counting the, the squares here, that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that will be the perpendicular distance. That's why it is 6 here. And its rotation about point A will be this way. So this is actually... Uh, counterclockwise, right? That's why it's negative here. So again, uh, if we're going to solve for uh, the moments of the component forces of P, it will still give you zero. So this will just be zero. So uh, try solving this and inputting this in your calculator. It should give you zero. Okay, so uh, what will remain here is just uh, this negative 450 times 3 over 5 times 5. So uh, let's solve this. Let's input it on your input this on your calculator that will be negative 450 times 3 over 5 times 5 your 5 will just be a uh, cancelled actually right so it will just be negative 450 times 3 okay and it will give you negative 1350 newton meter so again uh since it is negative okay so your your moment at a okay the moment of force f and force p about point a will be 1350 newton meter counterclockwise Oh, so as you can see here, um, it just uh, yield uh, it yielded the same answer as your solution one. Okay, so meaning to say, um, it's really uh, true. Okay, your principle of transmissibility, okay, is proved true uh, in these solutions, right? So um, let's uh, proceed to our next uh, item, which is moment at B. Now for the second item, so that will be the moment um, at point B. Okay, so for our solution here, okay, so um, since your point B is here, right? So this is uh, the location of your uh, point B. So uh, we can be uh, wise here, okay? That since we know the, the principle of transmissibility, okay, we, we can uh, transfer, okay, the component forces, uh, uh, of your or the components of your forces in such a way that our solution will be shorter and easier. So in this case, uh, if we put our component forces here, the component forces of your force F, okay, so both forces, okay, both component forces will have a moment about point B, right? So this uh, force, uh, horizontal component of force F will have a moment at point B and also your vertical component, right? So uh, it will not uh, save, okay, uh, or it will not make your your solution shorter, right? So uh, meanwhile, if you put your component force, okay, here, okay, or the component forces of your force F, okay, so if you put them here, okay, your vertical component, okay, will pass through point B, meaning to say it will give you zero moment. So it's better if we put our component uh, force here, right, so that your, only your uh, force Fx will have a moment about point B. So it's about being wise on where you put your, your component forces, okay, in such a way that uh, your solution will be shorter, okay, and easier. Okay, so we, we will put our component forces here. Now for your force P, Okay, so for your force P, uh, instead of putting your uh, component forces here, because if you put your component forces here, class, uh, both of your forces will have a moment about point B, right? So this uh, horizontal component will have a, for a moment about point B. Also, your vertical component, it will have moment at point B. So instead of putting your component forces here, put your component forces here. Right? Because if you put your component forces here, only PY, okay, only the vertical component will have a moment at point B. Since your PX okay, will pass through point B, meaning to say your PX will, be, uh, will have a zero moment. So it will no longer be included in your summation. Okay, so we put uh, our we will put our uh, component forces here for force P. So from that, okay, we can now sum up uh, or solve for the moment at point B. Okay, uh, by summing up all the forces that have that have moment at point B. So that will be forces P, Y, and F, uh, F X rather. So let's solve this. 
So moment at B will be equal to, uh, so let's first uh, take the moment of Fx. So your Fx will be uh, 300, no, 450 times uh, 4 over 5. So that will be the horizontal component times its moment arm will be, so its moment arm will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So th that's why it is 6 here. And its rotation will be, uh, clockwise, right? So it will rotate this way about point B. So it will be clockwise and that's why it's positive here. Now for your uh, vertical component here, so that's the component that has moment at point B. So your vertical component here is 361. So that is the magnitude of force P times uh, 3 over square root of 13 to make it uh, the vertical component of force P. Okay, and times the moment arm or the perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance of this force about point B will be this distance, and that is 1, right? So that's why it's 1 here, and its rotation will be, uh, it will rotate this way about point B. So that will be uh, counterclockwise. That's why it's negative here. So now solving this, so let's input this in our calculator. So that will be 450 times 4 over 5 times 6 minus 361 times 3 over square root of 13 times 1. So it will give you 1,859.6. So 0.6 na lang, no? So uh, since the answer is positive, no? So meaning to say uh, your moment at point B is clockwise. So this is uh, 1,859.6 newton meter. So no need to, to put here clockwise since uh, our assumption here uh, is positive for clockwise. So since it is positive, so meaning to say it is clockwise, matic that it will uh, that it is clockwise. So again, don't forget to include your unit that will be newton meter. Okay. So this will now be the answer for moment at B. Now for the third item. Uh, we will solve now for the moment at C. So again, uh, we're going to think, okay, wh where we are going to, to put our component forces in such a way that our solution will become shorter and easier. Okay, so, uh, so since uh, point C is located here, so we will put our component forces for force F here, okay, at this point, right? Because if we put it here, the component forces, your uh, horizontal component will pass through point C, which will result to a zero moment. Okay, so uh, only Fy will have a moment at point C if we put the components here. Now for force P, okay, so uh, we will put our component forces here, okay, uh, so that your horizontal component Px will pass through point C, and that will just give you um, a zero moment. So meaning to say only your Py has uh, a moment about point C. So uh, we will put these components uh, this way. So uh, solving these components or the moments of these components, that will be moment at C is equal to, uh, so the first uh, force that we're going to take the moment is uh, Fy. So Fy, the vertical component of F, that is again 450 times 3 over 5. And its moment arm will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from point C, so that will be 5 meter, no, from point C, so that will be 5 here, and uh, its rotation about point C will be clockwise, right, it will be clockwise, it will be clockwise, that's why it's positive here. Now for your PY, so again, PY is the vertical component of your force P, so that will be 361 times 3 over square root of 13, and your moment arm will be 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why it's times 4 here, and its rotation will be um, clock, uh, counterclockwise about point C, right? It is counterclockwise, so that's why it's negative here. So solving this, again, inputting this in your calculator, that will be 450 times 3 over 5 times 5 minus 361 times 3 over square root of 13 times 4. So that will give you 148.52 uh, newton meter. So that will be the answer. Since it is positive, meaning to say uh, your um, moment uh, is uh, clockwise. Oh, so that will be the answer for uh, moment at C.
Okay, so this will now be the answers for this problem. So now, let's proceed to sample problem number two. So a force P passing through points A and B has a clockwise moment of 300 Newton meter about O. Compute the value of P. So this will be the... Um, the illustration here for this problem. Uh, so we have here point A and point B. So point O is here. Uh, so, uh, as mentioned here, your force P passes through points A and point B. So it passes through point A and point B. But the thing here is that we don't know the, or it's not uh, mentioned in the problem, okay, the direction of your force P if it's downward to to the right or upward to, to the left, no? It's not mentioned here, okay? But since uh, there's a moment here, no? There's a given moment here and that moment is clockwise, or oh, that is 300 Newton meter about 0. 0.0. So the moment of that uh, force P, okay, is actually clockwise, no? Clockwise about 0. 0.0. So what should be the, the direction of your force P, okay, that passes through points A and B? Uh, that will give you, okay, that will give you a clockwise moment about point O. So if your, your force P is directed this way, okay, if it is upward to the left, if we take moment at point O, uh, its rotation will be counterclockwise, right? So meaning to say that is not the direction, the right direction. So the right direction will be the right because if we are going to take moment of that force P directed downward from point A no, to point B downward to the right, so it's a moment about point O will be this way. So it will be clockwise. So meaning to say, we can say, mean, we can conclude that your force P will be directed downward to the right. Okay, so from that, now we can uh, start solving. Okay, so again, our given for this problem is uh, the moment of uh, force P about point O. So that will be 300 Newton meter. Uh, that is clockwise. And uh, we are asked here to solve for the value of P. So we can have two solutions here. Okay, so uh, our first solution, so we already know that the direction of your force P will be this way. Okay, so our first solution, we will, uh, so to solve for the, the moment of P, okay, about point O, we will need a perpendicular distance. So since we don't know this perpendicular distance, we will use its component. So the solution one, okay, we will put the components here of uh, this force P. So uh, from from that, okay, uh, we can all we should we also uh, need pala, no, to uh, to 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 know the inclination of force P. No, so we will need a, a slope triangle here. So our slope triangle here, it's a right run. No, this is run. So our run is actually six. No, and our rise is actually three. But since we can reduce them to one and two, so we can do so. Okay, so that will be the, the run, that will be one, and our, or rise rather, your rise is one and your run is two. Therefore, the uh, hypotenuse of your slope triangle will be square root of two square plus one square, which is equal to square root of five. Now, from that, no, so uh, by putting our component uh, forces here, okay, to solve for the moment of, of P, okay, so since we, we already have the value for moment of P, this force P about 0.0, okay, which is 300. So again, this will be our equation. Your moment at point O will be equal to uh, all the forces that have moment at point O. And we have this positive assumption uh, that will be clockwise. Okay, So again, uh, the moment of your force P about point O is 300. So since this is clockwise, this will be positive here. So equals to... Um, so the, the 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 component force here that has moment about point O is only Px, right? Or the horizontal component of P. Since your Py will pass through point O, it will just give you a zero moment. So your Px, okay, or horizontal component will just be P, 
okay, times the um, side in your slope triangle that is parallel to Px, which is 2. So that will be 2 over the hypotenuse. That will be square root of 5 times its moment arm. So the moment arm of your Px, uh, 2.0, okay, the line of action of your Px 2.0 will be 3 meters. So that will be 3 here. And its rotation will be clockwise, right? It will, it will be clockwise about 0. 0.0. So um, solving for P, Okay, so we can now solve P. So that is just 300. So we just divide both sides by 2 over square root of 5 times 3 to solve for P. So that will be 300 over uh, 2 over square root of 5 uh, times 3, right? So that will give you 50 times square root of 5 or 1180 so our unit here is Newton. So this is just force, ha? So our unit here is Newton. So that will be the answer for this problem. Okay, so for this solution, no? So your other solution, okay, so we can uh, put our component forces here. So it's also okay if we put it here. No? So if we put our components here, your Px now, will pass through point O. So if it passes through point O, meaning to say its moment about point O will just be zero. So our force, force here that only uh, has moment about point O will be PY. So solving for moment at O, so that will be summation of all the forces that have moment at point O, clockwise will be positive. Okay, so since we already have moment at O, that will be 300 Newton meter. Okay, and that is positive that since that is clockwise equals to um, your PY. Your PY is P times 1 over square root of 5 times your moment arm, which will be 6 meters, right? This will be the moment arm. And your rotation here will be clockwise. So that will be positive here. So solving for the value of P, so in putting this on your calculator, we just divide both sides by 1 over square root of 5 times 6, uh, so that only P will uh, remain here in this side. So that will be 300 over uh, 1 over square root of 5 times 6. So that will be, give you 50 times square root of 5, which is also equivalent to 111.80, which is also equal okay, to the answer in our solution 1. So we can use either of these two solutions, no? So it will just give you the same answer. So now let's proceed to sample problem number three. So in the figure below, a force F passing through a C causes a clockwise moment of 120 newton meter about A and a clockwise moment of 70 newton, newton meter about B. Determine the force and the X intercept. Okay, so... Uh, we already have here uh, an illustration for, for this problem. So it's given. Okay, so uh, the mentioned uh, condition in this problem is that your force F, uh, it is passing through point C. So this will be uh, the line of action, let's say, of your force F. Okay, so it passes through point C. Okay, and um, it causes a clockwise moment about point A. So your point A is here. So, uh, your force F, okay, so it will have a clockwise moment, okay, which is right, right, because uh, if this is the direction of your uh, force F, okay, it will have a clockwise moment about point A, and that clockwise moment is 120 Newton meter. Now, um, as mentioned here, it will also have a clockwise moment about point B. So this force F, no, so its direction is upward to, to the right, ha. Huh? So we, we knew that uh, it is upward to the right because of these components here, oh. So these components are upward to the left, right? So your uh, force F will also be upward to the uh, left, left rather, no? So um, so if that is the, the direction of your force F, so your moment at point B will be this way. Right, so it will rotate this way, right? So meaning to say your moment about point B will be clockwise as mentioned in the problem and that is 70 Newton meter about point B. Okay, so um, the question here is we have to determine force F 
and the x-intercept. So the x-intercept, that is the the distance, okay, of your of the 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 point, okay, where your force uh, intersect the x-axis to the origin. So this is your i-x. No, so this is the distance from your origin to the point where your force crosses, okay, the x-axis. So that will be the x-intercept. So we're going to solve that uh, distance. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Okay, so let's list down our given here. So our given here is moment at A, 120 newton meter clockwise, and your moment at B is 70 newton meter clockwise. Okay, so we are asked here to solve for uh, the force F. So the, the force F is here, right? So it is upward to the left, no? So, and we are also asked to solve for the x-intercept. So this is the x-intercept. So now we can utilize the given uh, moments here. Okay, so let's, let's say we uh, use a moment at A. So we're going to, to take the moment of force F Okay, about point A. Okay, so uh, if you want to 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 uh, get okay from uh, taking moment at A, okay, we can actually put our components either here or here, right? But if we are going to put our components here, uh, your F Y, okay, uh, its moment arm will be I X about point A, right? But since we don't have uh, I X yet. No, so we cannot put our components here. So instead, we're going to put our components here. So here, um, your Fy will pass through point A. Okay, so meaning to say only Fx has moment about point A. Okay, so your Fx, okay, we cannot also know your, your Fx, right? So we don't have also a slope here, right? Because your Ix is unknown. So we, we cannot... Uh, solve for the slope of your uh, force F, right? So we will use Fx instead, uh, okay? So as the, uh, the the unknown here, okay? So your Fx will be the horizontal uh, component of your force F. So your moment at A, again, is 120 Newton meter clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Equals, so the moment of your Fx will be uh, Fx times 2, Okay, that will be the perpendicular distance. Okay, and uh, since it is clockwise, right, it will uh, have a rotation of uh, clockwise direction in clockwise direction. So that will be positive here. So solving for Fx, that will just be 120 divided 2, right? So your Fx is 60 Newton. But what you need is force F, not Fx. So to solve for F, okay, we will also need Fy. Right to solve for, for f because your f will just be square root of fx squared plus fy squared. So we also need to solve for fy. Now we can also use the other uh, given moment, which is moment at b. So we're going to take moment at b. Okay, we're going to take the moment of force p about point b. So using that, so that will be moment at b is equal to summation of uh, the force or forces that have moment at point b. Okay, so our assumption here is positive clockwise. So your moment at B is 70 Newton meter, and that is clockwise. That's why it's positive here. So um, if we're going to, to put our uh, component forces here, again, your Fy will have a, a perpendicular distance uh, na 5, right? So actually, we can put our component forces here because uh, our distance, okay, your Fy has a perpendicular distance of 5. Uh, at your point B, okay, and um, your Fx will have this perpendicular distance, right? This is 3 meters from uh, point B. So um, we will use that instead because if we're going to put our components here, okay, so your Fy will have a, a, a moment arm or perpendicular distance, uh, which is this distance, uh, but this distance is uh, unknown, right? Because uh, we don't know the value of Ix. That will be 5 minus Ix, but we don't know the value of Ix yet. So we're going to put our component forces here so that we can solve for, um, for Fy. Okay, so that will just be Fx. So the moment of Fx about point B will be 
uh, will have a perpendicular distance of three, right? So that's that's why uh, it will be three here, and it will have a counterclockwise rotation. That's why it's negative here. Now for your Fy, so your Fy will have a perpendicular distance of five. So that will be your moment arm. That will be five Fy times five. And uh, its rotation will be clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Now, we already solved the value of Fx, which is 60. So we can substitute that here. So this will be 70 is equal to negative 60 times 3 plus Fy times 5. So solving that in your calculator, so that will be negative 60 times 3. That will be negative 180. So transposing that at the other side, that will be positive 180, right? So that will be 70 plus 180 over 5. So solving for Fy, that will give you 15 Newton. So now, since we have Fx and Fy, we can solve for the value of F. So that will just be square root of Fx squared plus Fy squared. So that will be square root of 60 squared plus 50 squared. And it will give you, so let's input that in our calculator. That will be 60 squared plus 50 squared. And that will be 10 times square root of 61 or 78.102 uh, Newton. Uh, so this is Newton since this is a force. This is not a moment. So the unit is Newton. Uh, so that will be the value of force F. Now we are also asked to solve for the value of Ix. Okay, so the uh, x-intercept. So uh, to solve for the uh, value of x-intercept, we can actually use... Uh, the the given moments no so if we use moment at a okay so the component should be uh put here okay so that we can uh, involve ix right so the moment arm of fy is uh, ix and we have value for fy which is 50 newton and your fx we we already computed the value so we can use that okay so but we're going to use uh, mb in this case no so we will use the moment at b so using the moment at B, that will be, again, summation of all the forces that have moment at B. So uh, we're going to put our uh, components here. Actually, we can also put our components here because your Fy, its moment arm at point B, no. Uh, its moment arm is 5 meters, so your Ix will not be involved. No. So instead of putting putting your components here, we will put our components here instead so that our Ix will be involved. Okay, so um, here your Fx will uh, give you a zero moment since it will pass through point B, right? So the, the force that has moment is Fy. So your Fy, okay, will have a moment arm of five minus Ix. So this will be that uh, perpendicular distance, right? Five minus ix so um, again your moment at b is 70 newton meter clockwise that's why it's positive equals uh your fy the moment of your fy that will be fy times your moment arm which will be this distance which is equal to 5 minus ix so that will be 5 minus ix and your fy we already computed for that value okay so that will be 50 newton so substituting that okay that will be this will become 70 Where's my calculator? So that will be 70 is equal to 50 times 5 minus Ix. So solving for Ix, that will just be 70. So we uh, distribute this. So this will be 50 times 5. That will be 250. Okay, so we're going to transpose Ix to the, uh, to the uh, other side so that it can become positive. So transposing that and distributing this first, so that will be negative 50 Ix. So we transpose that to the other side and what were what will remain here will be 50 times 5 which is 250 and then we're going to transpose 70 at the right side so that uh, only 50 ix will remain at the um, left side okay so that will be uh, that will give you uh, 50 ix okay is equal to uh, 250 okay minus uh, 70. So that will be 180 divided by 50. So it will give you 3.6 meters. So the value of your Ix will be 3.6 meters. So uh, if we validate this uh, answer, so it will be logical naman since your Ix should be uh, less than 5 meters. So it will be a valid 
uh, answer. Uh, so this will now be the answers for this problem. Okay, so now let's proceed to sample problem number four. So the moment of a certain force F is 180 newton meter clockwise about point O and 90 newton meter counterclockwise about point B. If its moment about A is zero, determine the force. So again, uh, this is our illustration here. So we don't know yet the direction of force, uh, force uh, that we are looking for here. So let's say force F. So the, uh, the unknown is force F, right? So uh, we don't know yet the, the direction, but we know that it passes through, uh, as said in the problem, okay, so uh, the moment at point A is zero. So meaning to say, if the moment about point A is zero, uh, it means that your force passes through point A, right? So it passes through point A and uh, we don't know yet the direction if it is downward to the right or upward to the left. So uh, from the moments that are given here, it says that um, your force F is 180 newton meter clockwise. Okay, the moment about O. So this is point O. So what will what should be the direction of force F in such a way that it will produce um, a clockwise moment about point O? So it should be um, it should be directed downward to the right, right? Because if it's directed this way, downward to the right, it will give you clockwise moment about point O, right? And also, it has a counterclockwise uh, moment, okay, about B. So, uh, meaning to say, uh, if it has a moment at point B, okay, meaning to say it, it doesn't pass through point B, right? Your force F doesn't pass through point B. Okay, so the question here is uh, where your force F uh, will pass through. Is it here or here? So we're going to know that, okay, by uh, the mom by the given moment. So the given moment at point B is 90 newton meter counterclockwise. Since it is counterclockwise, okay, so uh, it cannot be put here this way, right? Because if we put is put your uh, force F this way, uh, it, its moment about point B will be clockwise, right? So your force F should be put here, so between point O and point B, so that uh, its moment about point B, if its, if its direction is downward to uh, the right, its moment about point B will be counterclockwise, right? So it will be counterclockwise. So that will satisfy uh, this problem. So let us start solving this. So let's start solving. So again, this is these are the, the given. Okay, so for your moment at B, it will be negative since uh, the, the given moment is counterclockwise. Okay, so um, this will be the direction of our force F. Okay, so it will pass through uh, between point O and point B. Okay, so um, let's start solving this. So we can utilize this... Uh, moment at O and moment at B. So we are asked here to solve for the value of F. Okay, so um, we can use, uh, let's say we first use the moment at O. So solving for the moment at O, so this is point O. So uh, we can uh, put our uh, components here, right? So we cannot put our components here because we don't have this distance. Right, we don't have this. We know that this is six meter from point O to point B, but from this point up to this point, this has no distance. Okay, so we cannot put our components there. So we're going to put our components here instead. Okay, so putting our components here and taking moment at O, your uh, vertical component will pass through point O, therefore, uh, it will have a zero moment. So the component force that only has moment. Uh, is your uh, horizontal component. So your horizontal component here uh, will be, uh, that will be, uh, our moment here will be 180, okay, for moment at O, okay, so that will be positive, and uh, this horizontal component will be Fx, and its moment arm will be 3, okay, so that will be Fx times 3, and it is clockwise, right, so that's why it's a positive here. Okay, so solving for Fx, that will be 60 Newton. Now for MB, okay, we can use MB. 
Okay, so using a uh, moment at B, okay, so we will uh, take moment about this point. Okay, so if we're going to uh, take moment at this point, uh, again, we cannot put our component forces here because we don't know this distance. If we put our vertical component here, we don't know this distance, right? So we will put our components here. Okay, so taking moment at B. So again, your moment at B is negative 90 newton meter since it is counterclockwise. Okay, and your Fx here, uh, its uh, moment arm will be 3 meter. Okay, it's uh, about point B, right? That will be 3 meter. Uh, and so that will be Fx times 3. And uh, your rotation will be uh, clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Now your Fy, uh, its perpendicular distance now from point B will be 6 meters. And its rotation will be counterclockwise. That's why it's negative here. So that will be Fy times 6. Now, since we already solved your Fx, that is 60 newton. So we can substitute that here. So solving for your Fy, so that will just be, uh, we transpose negative 6Fy to the other side so that it will become positive. So what will happen here, that will be 60 times 3. And we transpose negative 90 to the other side so that will become positive. So 60 times 3, which is 180 plus 90, that will be 270 divided by 6, right, to solve for Fy. So that will be 45. So that will be 45 Newton. Your Fy is 45 Newton. So from that, um, we can solve for the value of F. That will just be square root of Fx squared plus Fy squared. So that will be square root of 60 squared plus 45 squared. So solving for that, inputting that in your calculator, that will be 60 squared plus 45 squared, and it will give you 75. So now that will be the value of your force F. That will be 75 Newton. So that will now be the answer. Okay, so this will be our last problem for this topic. So this is sample problem number five. A moment of 50 pound feet about point O is required to loosen the nut. Determine the smallest magnitude of the force F and the corresponding angle theta that will turn the nut. Okay, so this is the nut that uh, we are mentioning here. Okay, so uh, we're going to use this tool. So this tool is called wrench, as I've mentioned. No, so uh, we have to apply force F, okay, to, to loosen up, okay, this nut, okay. So um, the question here is the uh, what should be the smallest magnitude of your force F, okay, to, to, to turn this nut or to loosen up this nut, okay. And what will be the corresponding theta, okay. So since the question here is the smallest magnitude, okay, so we're going to actually... Um, apply okay what you have learned in your uh, differential calculus which is the the uh, how to solve uh, the maximum or negative uh, negative values okay for a quantity okay so that is maxima and minima so we're going to apply that in our um, in this example okay so let's start solving this Okay, so again, uh, we are asked here to, to find for the um, smallest magnitude of force F and its corresponding theta. Okay, so for our solution, okay, so also there's a given moment, right? There's a given moment about point O, and that is uh, 50 uh, pound feet, okay? So that is pound feet, okay? That is feet, ha? the moment arm, the unit of moment arm is feet. Okay, so that is counterclockwise. That's why we put here negative 50. Okay, and that will be equal to the moment of your force F, okay, about point O. So your force F, okay, so to solve for its moment, we can, since this is inclined with uh, theta here, okay, so um, we can solve for its moment, okay, by putting the uh, component forces here. So we have here horizontal component and vertical component here, right? So, um, its horizontal component will pass through point O, therefore it will be zero. So, for your vertical component, so your vertical component will be F sine theta, right? So, that's why it's F sine theta here. And your moment arm will be 15 inches. Plus, okay, so the unit of your moment at the left side is a pound feet. So, your moment arm should be in feet, 
but this is in inches. So we have to convert first your uh, 15 inches to feet. Okay, so to convert that, uh, that will just be divided to, to 12, right? Since for every 12 inches, there's a, there is one feet. So that will just be 15 over 12 to make that feet. Okay, so that will be the moment arm. And since it is, it's rotation, okay, it's counterclockwise, it's negative here. Okay, so from here, uh, we can actually cancel the, the negative. Okay, so this will be 50 is equal to F sine theta times uh, 15 over 12. So from here, um, applying your knowledge in differential calculus for your um, maxima and minima. So you have to solve first for the uh, the uh, derivative, okay, of your uh, of this equation. So your variables here are f and theta. Okay, so the the derivative of 50 will just be zero since that is a constant equals. Okay, so uh, we're going to find the derivative of f sine theta times 15 over 12. Okay, so your 15 over 12 is just constant, so we just factor that out here. And your f sine theta, okay, you, so we will use um, product rule of differentiation to get its derivative. So applying your, uh, applying product of uh, derivative or lamba, product, derivative of product, Okay, so that will just be um, VDU plus UDV, right? So uh, here, that will just be F and then the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta plus, okay, the derivative of F, that will be DF over D theta. Okay, so our independent variable here is theta. Okay, our dependent variable is F. Now, um, we just rewrite sine theta. So again, that is UDV plus VDU. You just rewrite the, the first uh, the first term, which is, that will be U. And then DV, the derivative of the second uh, term here, which is sine theta plus VDU. So you just re rewrite your second term, which is V. And uh, DU, which will be the derivative of your first term, which is... Uh, df over d theta nga, and then you just rewrite sine theta here. Oh, so this will be the, the derivative of f sine theta. So now, um, uh, we can actually uh, uh, cancel 15 over 12, okay, if we divide both sides by 15 over 12, since your uh, left side is zero, so it will just be canceled. So from here, okay, to get the maximum value, okay, we make uh, df over d theta zero. Okay, so that's the rule for for uh, maxima and minima, right? For uh, in your uh, differential calculus, we equate it to zero, or we make your df over d theta zero. So uh, making your df over d theta zero, so it will just be uh, cancelled. This term will just be cancelled, right? Okay, so this will become zero. So that will be f cosine theta is equal to zero. So now, um, if we're going to divide both sides by cosine theta. Okay, your f will be zero, but that will not be logical. Why? Because uh, if your f is zero, okay, it will it will not okay be able to loosen loosen up the knot. Okay, so you you should at least ha to uh, you should at least uh, have a, a, a force, right? A magnitude of a force to loosen up this knot, right? You have to apply a force. No, so that will not be logical. So instead, we're going to divide both sides by f. Okay, and uh, it will just be become cosine theta is equal to zero, right? Because your f will just be cancelled, right? Since it is zero in the right side, okay? So that will just be um, f cosine theta over f or is equal to zero over f. So that will just be zero, no? So that will be cosine theta is equal to zero. So solving for the value of theta, okay? So it will just be uh, theta is equal to arc cosine of zero. So what will be the arc cosine of zero? Okay, so that will be um, 90 degrees if it's in degree mode, right? So that will be 90 degrees. So that will be uh, the theta, the value of your theta. So uh, that's the answer for your theta. Now for your uh, F, okay, so we're just going to substitute, okay, the, the value of the theta that we have solved from our original equation. So this is our equation. So since we already solved for the value of theta, okay, so solving for the value of F, uh, that will be, uh, so solving for the value of f, it will just be 
uh, you will just divide both sides by sine 90 times 15 over 12 to solve for the value of F. So inputting that in your calculator, that will just be 50. So the sine of 90 is actually 1. So sine 90 times 15 over 12. Oh, so you divide that to 50. Okay, so 50 over sine 90 times 15 over 12. So that will give you, uh, what will be the answer? That will give you 40. So the answer for F will be 40 pound. Oh, so the unit here will be pound since this is a force. Okay, and the unit of your moment is pound, uh, pound feet. So the unit for your force is pound. So that this will be the answer for this. So this is the smallest magnitude of force F. Okay, that can loosen up this knot. Okay, with the angle uh, 90 degrees, that will be the corresponding angle. Okay, so this will be the answers for this problem. So that concludes this discussion. So I hope you, you learn from, from this. And uh, don't forget to answer the course material assessment task given in the uh, last page of the course material given. Okay, so see to it that you answered that. Okay, so see you again. Bye-bye.